to our fourth witness, who is here in person, uh, Brad Palumbo, who is a journalist and opinion editor at the Foundation for Economic Education. He was previously a media and journalist fellow oh, at the Washington Examiner and an editor at the media nonprofit Young Voices. Uh, Mr. Palumbo. Chairman, Ranking Member Paul, members of the committee, thank you for the opportunity to testify here today. I'm an editor at the Foundation for Economic Education, where I conduct policy reporting and analysis. And I've been doing this for several years now, but this week was the first time that tears flooded my eyes when I reported a story. I was reporting an interview that the Associated Press did with doctors across the globe, warning that lockdown orders are leading to an international epidemic in child suicide. We are very surprised by the intensity of the desire to die among children who may be 12 or 13 years old, a French doctor said. We sometimes have, a ch have children of nine who already went want to die. It is a genuine wish to end their lives, this doctor told the AP. And he told the AP that the number of youth suicide attempts his hospital sees in a month has more than doubled amid pandemic restrictions. Here in the US, the Centers for Disease Control reported that 25% of young adults considered suicide during the COVID lockdowns, while overall mental health issues appear to have spiked as well. CDC data show a 24% increase in emergency room mental health visits for children ages 5 to 11 compared to 2019. Among adolescents aged 12 to 17, that increase is 31%. The spike in depression and suicidality triggered by the social isolation of pandemic lockdowns is most certainly not what proponents of these measures intended. But as Henry Hazlitt wrote in Economics in One Lesson, responsible policymaking requires us to look beyond intentions and immediate effects. It means taking into account a policy's indirect consequences and its collateral damage. And sweeping government interventions tend to be plagued by unintended consequences, sometimes lethal ones. There has been perhaps no more dramatic example of this lethality than the unintended consequences of pandemic lockdowns. Government officials took drastic, unprecedented steps of closing businesses en masse, criminalizing citizens' livelihoods, and essentially placing healthy Americans under a form of house arrest. The lockdowns and restrictions have been normalized, but they are not normal. My colleagues and I at the Foundation for Economic Education have spent the last year chronicling the myriad ways that COVID lockdowns have led to unintended consequences. The aforementioned mental health crisis is only one of the many that have emerged as a result of these unprecedented government restrictions. We have also seen an enormous uptick in addiction and drug overdoses. According to the CDC, over 81,000 drug overdose deaths occurred in the US in the 12 months ending in May 2020. That's the highest number of overdose deaths ever recorded in a 12 month period. Now the full data will take years to analyze, but state and local level examples of this tragic trend are too numerous to list. Meanwhile, an analysis from the National Commission on COVID-19 and Criminal Justice found that domestic violence spiked 8.1% after lockdowns. The study's authors said that this figure is, if anything, a floor, not a ceiling. It's an underestimate. None of this even touches on the economic devastation wrought by government pandemic lockdowns. According to the business website Yelp, 60% of the 163,735 businesses uh, that use the website, which have closed, will never reopen. Small businesses, in particular, have been hit hardest by COVID pandemic lockdowns. More than 100,000 small businesses permanently shuttered last year, while polling shows that 60% of small business owners worry that their business won't survive until June of 2021. From mental health to drug overdoses to domestic violence, the immeasurable economic and social damage that lockdowns have wrought cannot be made whole by any amount of welfare by any amount of stimulus checks, or by any amount of business grants. 
Lockdowns and continued pandemic restrictions are what's crushing the American spirit and the American economy. Neither the Paycheck Protection Program or other fraud rife and inefficient federal programs can heal this ailment. Policymakers who continue to perpetuate lockdown policies and heavy handed pandemic restrictions must discover the humility necessary to see that their sweeping actions have consequences beyond their control, beyond their understanding, and beyond their intentions. Until they do so, millions of Americans will continue to suffer silently. Thank you. And thank you very much for your testimony. We'll now go to.